Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, September 23rd. 8.15 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. A coronal mass ejection is headed towards the Earth in just a few days, set to make contact on the 26th. Bad news because a hurricane is coming our way that could be accentuated by that energy. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. Helene is forecast to rapidly intensify over the next 24 hours and then hit Florida as a major hurricane. Some models predicting Cat 3, even Cat 4 potential as it makes landfall 2 p.m. Thursday on the panhandle. Here are the current spaghetti models and the newest run, which is honing in on an area which, good news, uh, not a lot of homes are there. We do have a barrier island here, which will be decimated, unfortunately, but not a lot of homes in this wetland area. The major effect could be flooding. So heed the warnings, and we'll have a better update in 24 hours. But here is the key message for potential tropical cyclone 9, which will become Hurricane Helene. The disturbance is forecast to intensify and be near hurricane strength when it reaches the far northwestern Caribbean Sea Tuesday night. Tropical storm conditions are expected over portions of western Cuba and the northeastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula with hurricane conditions possible. The system is expected to intensify into a major hurricane before it approaches the northeastern Gulf Coast on Thursday. While it's too soon to pinpoint the exact location and magnitude of its impacts, the potential for life-threatening storm surge and damaging hurricane force winds along the coast of the Florida Panhandle and the Florida West Coast is increasing every hour. Storm surge and hurricane watches will be likely issued for a portion of that area tonight or Tuesday morning, and residents should ensure they have their hurricane plan in place in the next 24 hours. Potential tropical cyclone 9 will bring heavy rain to portions of the Western Caribbean, which may lead to flooding and possible mudslides in Western Cuba. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all those that will be affected. So if you're in this region, please make your plans now and either hunker down or get out of Dodge. And here's the full forecast, severe weather potential for the center of the nation, dangerous surf conditions for the east, watching the tropics. Low pressure over the center of the nation will focus showers and thunderstorms, some severe with heavy rainfall the next couple of days. In addition, high surf, coastal flooding, and rip currents will remain a concern for most of the eastern seaboard through early this week. For the Western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, we are closely monitoring the potential for tropical development over the next few days as a major hurricane may make landfall in just a few days. Here is the GFS model and we'll run it through for you. And you can see that storm rapidly developing in the next 12 hours as it makes its way up into the Gulf Thursday morning and rapidly moves up to Florida. That is the GFS model. Let's look at the European Ensemble, also showing that storm doing exactly the same thing, making landfall in exactly the same spot on Thursday. One other, we could look at the CMC, and that is showing landfall exactly the same place. So you put all those models together, all the major supercomputers and well, the storm is coming to the panhandle of Florida Thursday, September 26th. A quick look at rain and frozen potential, and you can see that there are some systems that will moving through British Columbia. And take a look at where the storm will go up into the east coast here. Major flooding rains for the central U.S., as we've got some snow in the forecast. There is the total snowfall for B.C., uh, through the 3rd of October. Take a look at the GFS model, and they're going to show a little bit more of the white because that moves way further out here, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. And I think this is going to be a winter to remember, especially because Montana was lacking in snow last year. 
And well, it looks like it's going to get a licking early here in the fall. Shut up, Al! Get your hole! Al Gore says he has a mansion in Montana and it doesn't snow there. No bun cake for you! Seismic update. No quakes of note. A moderate uptick worldwide, though, in moderate activity. You can see here we've got activity on all the mid-ocean ridges and everywhere there are fault lines. Good news, no major quakes of any note. Worldwide Volcano News, and this is for the 23rd of September. Samaru, 14,000 foot. Who knew? Now you do. Simon Kai to 24. This is how we started yesterday. 8,000 foot puff from Ibu. Samaru, 14,000 foot blast. We've got Novado de Ruiz on the list. Ducona to 8,000 foot. Fuego to 15. Merapi, 10,000 foot puff and a new name on the list. Sabancaya, 22,000 feet. Ibu to 8. Raventador, 15,000 foot puff. Sangue puffing and passing. Semaru, 14,000 foot. Nevada de Ruiz, 20,000 foot. Ibu to 8. Fuego to 15. Ducono to 8,000 foot. Ibu to 8. And that wraps up the list of Worldwide Volcano News for the day. Hey, hey. Quick look at space weather, and you can see that M 3.7 from yesterday, followed by an another M flare today. The three-day geomagnetic forecast showing G1 geomagnetic storm for the 25th, and maybe more coming. Let's take a quick look at the forecast. Yeah, just a small bump, but after the 26th, we could be seeing some more effects from an oncoming CME here, just being modeled here at NASA. Here is the NASA prediction model moving quite rapidly, but you can see here on the 26th, that blast, glancing blow, and also on the WSA Enlil spiral, you can see that flare, the CME leaving the sun here, the 22nd towards the 23rd, and a glancing blow there. And that should happen mid-25th towards the 26th. They're claiming G1 geomagnetic storm, but... Based on this blast here, take a look at the intensity here, the impact footprint. I think we might see a bigger blast, maybe the G3 geomagnetic storm for three hours, hours of powers. And that means, well, we could be seeing some epic aurora. More fireworks in the sky. Could Comet A3 be visible in daylight? and the brightest for 100 years. Yes, some have said that Comet 2023A3 Tuchishan Atlas from when it will appear and how it will become. Well, it is going to reach its closest approach to the sun in just a few days. And well, let's get on with the article here. Right now, south of the equator, amateur astronomers are watching a comet that just emerged from behind the sun. Soon, it will, t it will be the turn of observers in the northern hemisphere. But will comet A3, also known as C, 2023 A3, Chuchusan Atlas, really become one of the brightest comets visible in the northern hemisphere in the last 100 years? Well, that certainly would be a story. People would be jumping from the rooftops. Now, this claim was by Starwalk. Or even potentially visible in daylight during October, as Sky and Telescope suggested. Well, it's too early to tell, but we will soon get more clues when it becomes visible from the Northern Hemisphere later this week. How bright will Comet A3 become? Well, the hype is real. Spaceweather.com reports that Comet Tuchislan Atlas is brightening rapidly, quoting Australian astrophotographer Michael Matiazzo, who has been imaging the icy snowball before sunrise. It's estimated to be shining at magnitude plus four, which puts it within the grasp of naked human eye. Some say it might get as bright as plus point zero six, the same as the bright star Vega. Prospects remain excellent for visually impressive evening displays in mid-October, according to the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, where we're headed tomorrow. Stay tuned for more booms. All the links will be below. A hidden Neanderthal lineage has been found. Thorin survived 50,000 years in isolation. 
it was once thought that there was a lone Neanderthal group that made it to the mass extinction at the Le Champ magnetic excursion 41,500 years ago, but now there are two. Two Neanderthal units that were separated for up to 50,000 years. Long genetic and so social isolation in Neanderthals before their extinction. A new paper coming out will be linked below. Ho, ho. Let's take a look at the global temperatures over the last 65 million years. And what can you glean? Well, it is the coldest on Earth in the last 65 million years. Yet the mainstream claims we're going to burn up and we're all going to die. And the temperature is rising faster than any time in the past. Take a look at the temperature range here in the recent times. Six degrees C. And we certainly aren't rising that much. It's all a show, folks, to scare you to death and to control, well, the 8 billion people that live on this globe. A new paper coming out from Science, a 485 million year history of Earth's surface temperature, relooks at all the proxy data to give a better picture of the temperature on Earth and what we're dealing with in the hottest times ever. Well, the fact is that today on Earth, is literally the coldest time on planet Earth ever. That's exactly opposite of what we've been told for decades, isn't it? All the links will be below. Lee and I will be covering this at great length on Saturday on the radio show. Nearly 500 killed in Israeli strikes on Lebanon as fears of escalation grow. Well, you shouldn't have shot missiles at Israel, now should you, Lebanon? And I don't give up about these Middle Eastern countries because they don't affect me a lick in the middle of nowhere in the United States. The only problem is all of our tax dollars are going to this shit show, murdering people, and I did not approve it. What I did approve is of the video coming up on Magnetic Reversal News in just a few minutes, a 650-foot Greenland mega tsunami on the 16th of September in 2023 sent seismic waves worldwide. A full breakdown in just 10 minutes. Please watch the video. And if you haven't heard, Tara Dower became the fastest person to complete the entire Appalachian Trail, literally decimating the record a female, actually a chick, not a chick with a dick, a real female. And she completed the entire 2,000 plus miles in just 40 days, 18 hours and five minutes. That's roughly 55 miles a day, 11,000 feet of climbing per day for over 40 days. I don't know Tara, but like most people who follow these things, I'm pretty blown away by what was just witnessed. Absolute history being making, well, and a woman getting the recognition she deserves. Rex Bear and I will be out in the painted desert tomorrow 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you live in that region, you could come meet us. We're going to be at the Puerco Pueblo, 3 p.m. mountain time. But we'll be in the Painted Desert at 2, and we'll be rambling around Route 40 all day. So if you live near Puerco Pueblo in the Painted Desert, well, maybe you can just make your way out there 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon and find us. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. And join us over at Magnetic Reversal News in just a few minutes for an amazing video on the 650-foot Greenland mega tsunami. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. Nee, nee, nee.